Today's photo walk brings us to Dixon City, Pennsylvania. The area that you see around me here was once a bustling coal mining area. In later years, it was reclaimed, and in recent years, it was turned into a rail trail system. We do have active railroad tracks nearby. We do have some nature. Now I'm going to be focusing on details of nature and a train bridge that we do have further down the trail. I'm going to be shooting with a combination of my 35mm and 85mm prime lenses on my Nikon D5600. I will be shooting an aperture priority and I'm going to be focusing on finer details and getting that shallow depth of field to really isolate the object from the background. So if you're ready, grab your camera and let's capture some moments. As we walk this trail, we're going to see some of the old coal mining ruins off to the left, coal piles, some various pieces of metal, lumber, telegraph poles. One shot I think we could get here is actually the trail itself. You can see it has the white stripes, almost like a passing lane. And I think we could use that to our advantage to get some lines running down the distance, getting down closer to the road. So I'm going to use my screen here, flipped out. I'm going to get down here on one knee, and I'm going to, let's see, touch the focuses on. This, this lens actually has a loud focus motor. So I'm on, let's see, I'm on 2.8. I'm going to focus there on that first stripe, recompose it. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. I'm going to actually bring it down a little bit more to 2.2. Focus on that first stripe there, recompose. Yeah, I'm happy with that shot. I was looking off into this pile here, and I spotted something that stands out to me. It appears to be a fence post of sorts with a little tiny spire on top of it. It's going to be a little tricky getting through the branches here, but I think I could get a shot of this. And it may look even better than it normally would without a low aperture shot. Because the branches should be blurred and the main focus should be on that. So let's see if we can make that happen. I'm going to adjust the aperture one more time. I'm going to go down to two. And I'm not getting a whole lot of branches. I'm going to back up a little bit more so I have a little bit more in the foreground. The next shot I'd like to get involves this railing or fence, whatever you want to call it. And I'm around a slight curve of it, and it starts and stops down there. The way I'm going to compose this is that I'm going to rest my camera and my arms to get stability on the railing here. I'm at an F2, 2.0 aperture. I'm going to focus on the very end of the post down there and recompose to get most of it in the frame here. And with that shot, it's blurry closest to us, and it gets more in focus as we reach the end of the post. Just came off the side of the trail. The river's down here. And if you look, there's two trees right next to each other. They're dead trees, but there's actually mushrooms. There appears to be mushrooms growing on them. I think that might offer a unique nature shot as we lower the aperture. I'm down 1.8 as low as it'll go. I'm going to focus on the one on the left. Keep it right in the middle. And there we go. So we got the tree with the mushrooms in focus and a slight blur in the background. The next shot I want to capture is going to involve using the planks of this fence and a dead tree stump right in between it. So I'm going to line up here, compose a shot so I have both the top and lower plank of the fence as my border or as the frame. I'm going to focus on that tree stump and capture that shot. So that one works out good. It provides a natural frame of the photo, but the main focus and object is on the tree stump. For now, I did switch to my 35 millimeter prime lens. I wanted to be able to get some closer up shots. And what I have here is pine tree of sorts, another one in the distance. And I want to try to get a close up of one of the branches with the needles. 
but with the other one in the background here. So I'm going to actually get a bit closer. I'm going to reach out, focus on that, compose, and there's my shot. That one looks a little bit too blurry in the background. I'm going to raise it up to 2.8. Take that shot once more. That's a little better because the branches here are in clear focus, but we can still see what's in the background a little bit. Right here, we do have a grouping of trees going in all different directions. And I'm trying to visualize if I could get a shot here that would be worthy of capturing the moment of it. There's a few different shots you could do with trees. You could do straight up with the branches spread out. You could do looking up the, the bark. You could do looking through the trees. There's a few different shots. I'm trying to see if any of them look like they're gonna be worthy of something, but I think I found my shot. So directly ahead of us, we've got this big trunk jetting outwards. I'm gonna remove this branch to get rid of that obstruction but this trunk though is covered in moss or as I like to call it nature's carpet so I'm going to focus on the color pop of it and leading away from it so let me get rid of this branch here and we're going to maybe take one or two shots maybe three to get the right not only composition but for the aperture, for the depth of field. So I'm going to do portrait mode with the camera facing up and down. And I'm going to focus here closer to me. Recompose upwards. And take that one. Okay, I'm going to bring down the aperture to 2.0. I'm going to raise exposure by a third. And I'm going to try it again. That shot I'm happy with. I got the green, I got sharp in focus right where I want to be, and blurriness leading out. That's just one example of shots you could get with trees. Directly ahead of us, off in the distance, we do have one of the things I wanted to photograph today, a train bridge. Not one, but two. Twin bridges. We're nearly at the bridges now. I'm gonna start underneath, take a few shots, then we're gonna head top side, and see what kind of photo opportunities we can find. It's a neat view down here. This area is also subject to flooding when the river does raise up. I was here once where this pathway that we're walking on was under several feet of water. So these are twin bridges. The left one is active, right one is abandoned. And looking ahead, can kind of see maybe why looks like the footer or the abutment of the right one is sunk down a bit it's actually cracked away from the other one and it's leaning at an angle so it's not holding like it should probably can't hold weight today if it had to so makes sense as to why it's no longer an active train bridge but we do have a lot of different angles a lot of different features and just a lot of rust <laughs> But I'm going to just glance around, look to see what I can spot. I may switch lenses back to my 85 because some of these are farther away. And uh, I do see some rivets, which may make for a good photo. The railroad ties and more, maybe some of the cross beams. So let me switch lenses and we'll start taking some photos. Okay, we're back. First shot I want to get is the rivets up here. Got to focus on those, recompose a bit. I'm not super thrilled with that. Try to get them leading down a little bit. May have to actually turn the camera at an angle. Oh yeah, that one works better. The next shot I see is actually between the bridges here. This would work best, it's actually not going to work with this lens, it's too close, but I was going to get just a shot between the bridges, I would need a wider angle lens for that. If I switch back to my 35, I may try and do that. Let's see what else we could get here. Okay, I do see a shot between the beam showing the cross member up on top. So I'm going to focus on that up there. 
kind of a looking through shot. And raise the exposure a little bit. Take that one more time. There we go. So we're peering through the beam to another part of the bridge higher up in the distance. Okay, the one shot I can get is actually the year plate up on top. It's backwards, but I should be able to get it though, looking through again. And I can reverse that shot to make it look how it's supposed to. There we go, 1906. So I just flipped that image to get the proper orientation so you guys can read it, but it is backwards. Another detail shot I could get is the footer up here where the beam and the bracket is resting on the abutment. Just kind of showing some of the construction elements of it. Not a spectacular photo, but it's a detailed shot. I'm going to switch back to my 35, see if I can get more of a wide angle shot of the bridges here. If not, we're just going to head topside, capture some shots up there. Switch back to my 35. It's not wide enough for the shots I want to get. I would need either my 18 to 140 and shoot on 18 or something less, maybe like a 10 or a 12, which I don't have yet. But what I do have is my phone, which is always on me. With this, there actually is a wide angle lens. So I can actually capture some of the shots I wanted to get on this camera using my phone. It won't be the same quality, but it's sufficient and it'll give me the desired look I'm looking to get on a wide angle lens. So I'm gonna go to wide, tilt upwards, and we're gonna get that shot. I'm going to get a side profile shot. Same thing using wide angle lens. Looking up, showing the side profile. There we go. So trade off is that, you know, we can't get a blurry background, but we can get more of the object in the frame. And it just goes to show that you don't need an expensive camera to get photos. If you have your phone, that has a built-in camera, that's all you need. Up here on the bridge now, we're obviously going to stay off and away from the active side. May get a shot down the rails, but we do have an empty abandoned side that we can utilize, which also has some rails. So I think we're going to be set to get the photos that we want to capture. Yeah, this is a neat location, Twin Bridges. I won't be crossing it. It looks sketchy as all heck. I'm not looking to face my fears today, so we're just going to stay where it's safe, capture what we can. 1904 on the left, 1906 on the right. This bridge is two years newer, but as we saw, structurally deficient. And they no longer needed a second or third line coming through here. I actually believe... There's probably another line that ran there, maybe three lines at once that utilize these bridges possibly. So let's see what we could do. We're gonna get down here and get a shot looking down the rail as our first shot here. I'm gonna do two shots like I normally do, one close with the focus in the foreground. I'm gonna raise the aperture to 3.2. I'm gonna recompose. Rail closest to me is in focus, blurry in the background. Now we're going to switch that, focus in the background, recompose, and there we go. That photo I like better of the two, but it just gives you an example of two different shots. Now I do see some spikes and some hardware used to anchor the rails down. I will be switching back to my 85 for that to get more detailed shots. Let's get a nice close-up detail of the end of the rail right here. Very nice, crisp, clear shot. 
showing you where the rail was cut. Yep, 100% I can confirm rails did come on this side too. So there was at least three, maybe four sets of lines that went through these bridges. Now it's down to one. Before I switch lenses, I want to get one more shot, kind of a wide shot of both bridges here. Gonna bring the exposure down a bit, lower the aperture a bit. All right. And one shot I often like to do is down the rails. Similar to what we did, since we have longer rails here, I'm gonna utilize my pop-out screen. I'm gonna actually sit on the rail. I'm gonna do this brief, briefly and safely as possible. And I'm going to take probably two different shots here. So I'm at an aperture 2.8. I'm gonna focus right here close to me, recompose for the distance. And then I'm gonna do the opposite, focus in the distance, recompose close to me. And we have two different shots, same location, same subject, but completely different looks. And actually you could get a detailed shot right here of a spike with some numbers on it. I'm gonna do that right now. You guys probably can't see it, but it's right in front of the camera. There we go. Nice little pop of the numbers on that spike. And one more shot I'm gonna get is basically just looking down the tracks just over the inside of the track with the camera. I'm gonna focus on the distance, bring it down a bit, and that's kind of looking through the gauge down into the distance. I'm back on my 85 now, and I wanna do a shot down the rails through the bridge. So I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna focus on part of the bridge over there. And let's see how that looks. Not bad. I'm going to raise the aperture a little bit. Then I'm going to focus a little bit closer to me. Get the blurriness in the background. I think it's still too blurred. I'm going to try one more time. All right, got the shot I'm happy with. I'm gonna get a shot of the 1904. Off center, shows a little bit more of what we're looking at besides just a number plate. Let's come back over here, get a shot or two that I want to get earlier. And I think we'll do pretty good of capturing this bridge. Oh, there's ducks down there, oh. Went by too fast. I would have liked to capture him in, in motion. I'm going to stay on the rail here. I'm going to peer down and get some of the hardware along the rail. Let me flip the screen out. It might be easier to see it. There we go. I'm going to do three of uh, F4. I think I can do a little better. I'm not thrilled with that shot. I actually just spotted another shot here too. These bolts on top of this piece of wood here. Yeah, I do like that one. I want to get lower down though for this hardware shot. May even, may even go this way. Kind of get down real close to it, like we're laying down on the tracks, even though we're not. Let's see, can maybe get that in focus? I 
Well, we got a few different variants. I think we're okay with those. I'm gonna get one more shot on my phone, a wide angle shot, and then we're done with this bridge. All right, I think we got a good angle right here. Capture. Actually just captured one more shot that I just found accidentally. So I'm sitting down on the ledge here. I'm just gonna switch lenses. Looking through, I have the top part of a church in the distance. And we're gonna be able to view through the bridge to capture that. So that's gonna make for a really nice shot. Let's see how that comes out first with this exposure. Okay, let me bring that down a little bit. and raise the aperture to two. All right, let me do one more at this orientation here, and that might be the shot I'm looking for. Yeah, that is a really nice shot. Just found that accidentally by sitting down and looking over. Walking back, ventured off trail and just wanted to show that there are just some more things from the, the mining days back here that weren't removed during reclamation. Just wanted to give you a brief look at them. Maybe we could find a photo opportunity or two. There's a lot of bricks here. There's actually a lot of bricks inside that structure. These are the things I love exploring on my main channel. And the reason I didn't do a video on this particular area is because of the reclamation. There's a lot more here than what's visible today. A lot of it was removed. There is a couple things here, some walls, brick, metal, supports. But for the most part, a lot of it was removed, including an old bridge that the mine cars rolled across. So I didn't do a video here, but just wanted to show you since we are in the area of what used to be back here, stuff like this. And now it's a rail trail going around it. I think I may be able to get a shot here. This cut beam here coming out of the ground does have a hole in it. Figure we can maybe get a shot through the hole of that brick column right there. Not sure how good it's gonna come out, but let's see if we can make it work. And the closer I get, the less we're going to see of the hole. So I just want to have the outline of it like that. All right, let me see if we get a maybe a little bit better one. Or actually a little bit, maybe a little bit further away. Yeah, I think one of those two shots will work. It's a creative shot looking through the hole at what's behind it. There is one more shot I want to get. It's not in this location, but it's going to be along this trail if I can find it. And something that's related to what took place here. And if I do find it, I'm going to capture that shot. Well, it looks like this was someone's maybe a little camping spot. Huh. That's interesting. There's a fire pit in there. It's cleared out. I think someone was taking shelter in there. It's actually a it's like part of a tent right there. And this was a, a wall of sorts that's laying down on itself, but was here from the mining days. Don't have a flashlight with me, but you can actually walk probably about 20, 25 feet back there. Interesting, nonetheless. So I found what I was looking for, and I'm going to display it to capture my shot. I think if we display it right here, that'll work out pretty good. I'm going to sit down and get a little dirty here. And we're going to get a shot of a black diamond 
on top of some nature's carpet. Gonna do a little bit lower, 1.8. Get a little bit closer. Off center it. Last one I captured is my favorite one. Since we're in coal country, black diamond on some nature. It's a win-win. Right now I want to share with you my MFS OTD, my favorite shots of the day. back where we started and there's a couple things I want to share with you that this video served a good example for two different reasons number one it shows that I do make mistakes I brought the wrong lenses with me I brought my 35 and 85 with the intention of getting crisp clear shots blurry background which I did the downfall of that is I wasn't able to get wide enough shots that I wanted to with those lenses I should have brought my 18 to 140 and probably my 35 prime that would have been a good combination to be able to get wide shots and some close-up shallow depth of field shots. The downfall with that 18 to 140 is that it doesn't give you that shallow depth of field as much. You can achieve it, but it doesn't give it to you as strong as you do with a prime lens. So that's a trade-off, but ultimately I was looking for a wide angle shot for a few circumstances and I wasn't able to achieve it with the lenses that I brought. So it just shows that I do make mistakes, even though I've been doing this for a decent amount of time. This was a learning lesson for me. So I know next time, based on, you know, wanting to get certain things like a train bridge, probably better to have a wide angle lens just in case. The other thing that serves for a good example of today is that you can think outside the box and achieve things even if you don't have exactly what you need. As you saw, I utilized my phone for a few of those shots. Thankfully, my phone has a wide angle lens, although it's not the crisp clarity of a, you know, DSLR like this. I was able to get the shots I wanted to with the wide angle lens on my phone. So between these two, I achieved what I wanted to do, got the shots I wanted to capture. I also want to mention too that before I started this channel, I did do two photo walks on my main channel, JP Videos. When I did those photo walks, which are very similar to this, I only used my phone because I only had my phone. I didn't have this camera yet. If you'd like me to do a smartphone photo walk again, but on this channel, let me know. I can certainly do it. And if you have suggestions for a location, such as, you know, a nature trail, city life, just putting out some ideas. If you have inclination to see a smartphone photo walk, even if you don't care about the location, let me know that. But if you do have locations that you could suggest, just general locations, feel free to leave them down in the comments section. And let me know what your favorite shot was of the day since I shared mine with you. I will say it's unfortunate. I did miss my window of opportunity to come here and film these ruins before the reclamation took place. I think it took place about maybe three, four years ago, roughly, five at the most, but there was more here then, and I could have came here and documented it from my main channel. But what I showed you today in this video is just a glimpse of what's still left behind. But I think I still may come back in the future and do a video of what's left here today. Anyways, that was my photo walk here of nature, train bridges, and old coal ruins here in Dixon City, Pennsylvania. Like always, I'll see you behind the camera real soon. Thanks for watching.